Hey, cheaters. Welcome to the Always Cheating Podcast. My name is Josh L. I'm here with Brandon K. Brandon K., how are you? Mm, last name redacted. Uh, we'll reveal yeah, why. Exactly. I've been on the run yeah. this international break. I should have just said, I should have said Josh X and Brandon X. You know, really <laughs> kept it totally wide open. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. We're going for the, the t- uh, formerly known as Twitter sort of sponsorship. Um, <laughs> good, good, good. I'm glad to be talking with you. You know, sometimes international yep. break pods, you kind of struggle for what do we talk about? It's like the next okay. game week feels so far away even though it's just a week away but there has been a big announcement of course the double game weeks for game week 34 have officially well, should, been i don't think uh-huh, yeah. yeah i don't think you should say of course because i think it's a um i it, it was kind of like a saturday news dump you know yeah. the way that like sometimes like when the white house has bad news yes. they want to share they wait until 4 four thirty on friday afternoon to, to share it yeah. i feel like that was like the double game weeks sort of were dropped secretly the international break. So yeah, the the Premier League and their endless pursuit to thwart or make make it uh, trickier for us. I mean, I'm, I'm supporting the <laughs> Premier League. I'm wanting, wearing my summer series Ooh, t-shirt. Which you can check right. check us out if you're listening on the podcast feed. Of course, go uh, find us on YouTube where you can see uh, what I'm wearing. Uh, of course. <laughs> That's a, the new name of the pod. It's going to be always cheating. What what we wore. And <laughs> Put this on with always cheating. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, cool. How are you, Josh? I mean, so the this yeah. news of the double game weeks kind of reinvigorated you and your 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 fantasy brain because yeah. we've been well, sort I of think... locked in on March Madness and college basketball yeah. for like the last four days. That's true. Although my my beloved Michigan State, our beloved Michigan State Spartans, yeah. are already out of it so um you we'll know, take the one on one win it was a respectable exactly. showing no one thought they'd beat UNC so. ex- exactly yeah. nice respectable showing um no I I think um it, it was nice it was actually nice the international break was was timed with um with with the, um, March the launch of there. March Madness because it's, it's it's already a lot of sports for me and my family you know not even me so much I could probably watch an even 16 hours a day with yeah. really no problem. Like I am such a sports junkie that that would be fine. I'd watch almost anything, you know, uh, as long as, as long as there were two sides, Brandon, you know, <laughs> well, what, and something uh, to be one, I would watch it. So like what about uh, golf? Yep. Uh, often referred to yeah. as a, as a metaphor for fantasy because it's just guys out there playing against themselves. Would you watch I'll golf? Even, I'll even watch golf. Okay. Yeah. I won't watch live cause I have some like kind of, uh, moral issues with 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 live but you know but i'll i will i would watch a pg i'll watch the valero open yeah. or the valspar or the what about they all have terrible sponsorships i, I they really okay we, we can't get we can't go down this road too much because there's there's so much <laughs> there's so much to discuss sure. but yes i'll watch almost anything I, uh, yeah, a welterweight I mean, boxing I, match i'd watch a welterweight boxing match I, boxing is actually probably one of my least favorite sports to watch yeah, yeah. uh yeah it's all i just the, don't it's understand it. like I don't really understand it either. And like, it feels like the best boxers are the ones who are defensive, right? So they're just constantly kind of coming together, right? Sure. It's all like clutchy. Free hugs, just not basically. Very, yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't get those like Mike. The reason why Mike Tyson is still popular 35 years after he like, you know, like his career was over basically is because he would like do what we thought boxing sure, should what be, they do right? in the Which rocky movies. giant punches <laughs> yeah exactly giant punches to the face <laughs> Outstanding. Um, all right so yeah, yeah. speaking of so punches they, to the face yeah. back to fantasy so they announced let's see one two three four five six seven double game weeks but uh, all, all for for game week thirty four, which is which is in late April. Um, and uh, but because of when they announced that, it sort of allows us to fill in the rest of the puzzle as well in terms of the other fixtures and when we think they're going to slot in. The only real question uh, it comes down to Chelsea and Spurs, uh, who are the two clubs that have um, two two uh, fixtures still to make up. And so what we suspect, and and again, I, I know this is like a broken record, but I just, I don't want to use his stuff without always giving him credit for it sure. because I think that Ben, ben Carlin does a great job of, of compiling this stuff. And so, um, you know, credit to him for, for, you know, pulling together these, these charts that sort of, you know, break things down a little bit. And so we know that, um, so we, we, you know, we, we kind of, we effectively know that um, who's going to play in game week 34 now. And then we have a pretty good sense of when Chelsea and Spurs are going to double. And that is going to be in, um, uh, in game week 37 for sure. That's like an absolute lock, uh, like 99%. And then most likely game week 36 as well. Right. Yeah. So um, it, it basically, uh, 
it allows us to do, to do some like really serious planning now, right? Like you and I are in a similar position. We both have wild cards and bench boosts left. We both used our free hits mm-hmm. um, unsuccessfully, like everybody yes. else who free hit in 29. I think we have to we have to say that, unfortunately. If I literally just forgot to activate my free hit and just started um, – uh, Anthony Robinson, I would have been in a better place yeah. than I was, yeah. uh, as things turned out, but you know, say lovey, right. We, you have to, you have to always be looking forward, not backwards, Brandon. Right. Yes. And as, especially when it comes to fantasy, what's the point in lamenting, uh, missed opportunities. So we have, um, basically, a, a, the big decision point now for those of us who still have a wild card, which is true for both of us mm-hmm. is do you wild card in order to target the the doubles that are that are that are coming up right the 34 doubles um or do you wild card to or do you kind of try to get to 34 try to basically field the best possible team using transfers right because you have five transfer windows right game week 30 31 32 33 34 there's five different weeks without any hits right where you could build a team that that is ready for for 34 right it's, it's it's honestly quite a quite a few weeks when you consider that you probably already have a number of these players in your squad already right um certainly like uh arsenal in my case um yeah. they're kind of the only well, i guess bournemouth too Solanke um, is, is still hanging around mm-hmm. a lot of squads so now we have a reason yeah. to keep him Exactly. Exactly. So we have, you know, there are some, uh, there are a handful of players. It would not be, I, you know, I don't think I could get to 11 necessarily. Yeah. Uh, and so, but, you know, and I don't want to like kind of do everything uh, right off the bat here, but I think that the real focus of this pod is going to be about, about these doubles, because I think the strategy that you choose for how you want to play game weeks 34 and 37, right. Yeah. Is going to dictate what you do beginning as soon as this week. Right. Yep. And so it's really important, I think, to, to start to look ahead a little bit. And one thing I thought, and I, I you know, you asked me earlier um, if I was energized by the doubles. Yes. And I think I got there, you know, like there's, there's a kind of moment when on Saturday when I saw the announcement and I was, I was like, I don't even want to like go there yet, yep. you know, cause you once it's like, once you open that door, you know, you're it's going all to you're going to think about. It's, it's a lot of time, yep. a lot of energy, yep. but then this afternoon as I was getting ready for the pod and I started to look at it a little bit and think things through a little bit and start to think about my own, you know, my own kind of, um, you know, my own strategy for how I want to target, um, the doubles, uh, you know, it, it did get me sort of energized cause I was like, okay, this, I think, you know, it's like, I think, uh, step a will work. I think step B will work. I started to sort of like really think things through. And, um, and I did, uh, you know, I did find it sort of energizing. And I think one thing that I really liked too was because they launched it on Saturday, the benefit from kind of my perspective, maybe the people listening to this pod too, is that I have not been inundated with strategy <laughs> advice yes, yet, right? right? Yes. Like I don't, I honestly yes. don't know genuinely what the optimal strategy is yep. for, for, you know, for targeting these. Yep. So I have been coming up with my own thoughts and not, and they haven't been sort of, uh, tinkered with by by other opinions that I've sort of added to my head, yes. right? And and sort of maybe and sometimes and sometimes cluttered it up, I think, right? Yeah. So um, you know, I think that uh I mean, do you have any initial thoughts just on the doubles themselves, yeah. you know, in terms of who plays, when they do, um, maybe what your kind of your early thoughts on what you want to do for your own squad are? Yeah, I guess I find the game week 34 doubles immediately a little bit more intriguing, sheerly from a Liverpool perspective and i think i f- yeah. i felt like an outsider with liverpool assets for uh the you know the last couple of months mostly because Salah was out for such a long time yeah but looking so you you pinpointed arsenal and bournemouth also and those those i think are really the three teams that i'm interested in in 34 liverpool arsenal bournemouth so my immediate yep. feeling is i can put together a team that uh, is going to work without a uh, wild card but the problem, going back to Liverpool, is Mo Salah. And I'm really um, kind of struggling to figure out um, how to move the pieces around in my squad to get Salah in. Really, it's a – we talked a little bit about this in our Patreon pod on mm-hmm. Thursday night. of Like all of our midfielders right now are working really well from Saka and Foden and Son and Cole yep. Palmer. Where does Salah fit in? So – I think maybe punting on that and seeing if over the next one, two, maybe three game weeks, we 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 understand which of those midfielders goes to make way for Salah. But prior to game week 34, it is Sheffield United at Anfield in game week 31. 
this is what's got yeah. me kind of thinking of maybe just saying I'm playing a wild card, not for the double game weeks. I'm playing a wild card to get the best asset in Mo Salah as soon as I right. can. Because yep. the way the way they're kind of split up between 34 and presumably 37 is they're kind of nice little digestible chunks. The teams that yep. stick out are City, Spurs, and possibly Manchester United if they can put another run of form together because they have two home fixtures against Arsenal and Newcastle. Yep. I'm feeling like I can get uh, good squads together for both of these doubles without a wild card. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, my and first thought is that people who save their free hit are an incredible spot right now yeah. when it comes to game yeah, week, game week right. 30, 37. Yeah. Um, I think that um, it really would be awesome to have a free hit for 37 now. And um, yeah, I mean, it was just a gamble. Uh, I know I said I wasn't going to look backwards, but I, I think I, I don't disagree. Like it, it didn't work out. Like mm-hmm. so be it, right? Like there's there's a version of this free hit where we end up on – 52 points a piece. Right. And James Madison gets a goal and an assist and whatever, you know, a handful of other things like go great. And, and we're sort of in a different spot than we are. You know, unfortunately it went almost literally as bad as it possibly could. Yeah. Right. Like a, a, to a comical <laughs> degree. Yes. Um, and not just like, Oh, we loaded up on Luton player, but like literally like every single team that played I, outside of Fulham, honestly, yes. who we probably, uh, you know, underrated. Um, well, I, I said on that, this yeah. pod, Josh, that that yep. that game week is going to come down to what version of Fulham shows up against Spurs, and I was correct. Yep. It just turned out uh, yep. <laughs> we didn't we didn't really uh, g- go in the right direction with that prediction. Yep. So I'm we're going to do obviously we're talking we're kind of just jumping right into it here, but I want to do two things on this pod, okay? okay. Uh, actually, three things. Uh, the first is how much time do we um, have? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll we'll see how this goes. Uh, the first is I want to uh, talk about general kind of chip strategy, which we're already doing a little bit. Uh, the second one is I want to talk about wild card players that I would target. Right, like I think a lot of people are ultimately, and I guess maybe I'm putting the cart before the horse here, but I think a lot of people are ultimately getting into wild carding in the lead up to 34. Right, uh, if not this week, the next week, mm-hmm. or or very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I want to talk about the players that I would be targeting if I wild carded. And spoiler alert: there's a very good chance I do that over the next couple of weeks. Yep. Um, so I want to talk about that. Uh, so chips, wild card strategy, and then I don't want to make the mistake of ignoring the game week in front of us, yeah. which is something. What sometimes what happens when you have a, a big double that's announced. So once we sort of talk through things a little bit, we're going to talk about game week thirty. And look ahead to um, the transfers and fixtures and captains because it's actually quite a tricky week for the captaincy. I think, right? I mean, especially if you don't wild card, right? If you wild card and you bring in Salah, sure, probably the the easy captain pick there. But if you don't, uh, then I think you have a lot of options, mm-hmm. right? Cole Palmer at home to um, to Burnley. Uh, you have um, Son at home to Luton Town, right? Like uh, just to name a couple, or you could just go with Holland, right? I mean, a player who. Is kind of always a good pick. All the good uh, guys are playing at home except for Arsenal, uh, who Arsenal, are away at right. the Etihad. Yeah. Uh, yeah Watkins, yeah, Solanke yeah, even. Uh, so, yeah, this will really exactly. – uh, I think it's a great differential week if you want to try so. to use the armband to get ahead. I think so too, yeah. uh, because in uh, and, and, and Arsenal are arguably the the best defense in the league, right? And so that obviously diminishes um, Holland's appeal totally. a little bit as well, yep. right? So, um, so the, yeah, so that's kind of the the game plan uh, for this pod. So uh, my thinking right now is um, I sort of two things. One is I think I'm probably going to go ahead and wild card. Most likely, I think in game week 31 mm-hmm. instead of game week 30, um, because and the reason I want to, I think I'm in a wild card now is because I just think it makes more sense to bench boost in game week 34. I just feel like the, it's just a lot easier to fill up your squad with, with players that, that, that might return for you uh, in 34, um, than it is in 37. I also am a little scared of game week 37 doubles in general. I think that they can be, um, they can be kind of trappy sometimes, right? Game week 37 doubles. Like, yeah. um, we're not talking about not the be, house music here. Uh, yeah, we're not talking about, we're not talking about house, yeah. but like, I think, um, I mean, you know, like man city almost certainly going to be in a, um, in the title race 
still. I mean, maybe, maybe by 37, it's decided, um, yeah. you, you know, in one in their favor or someone else's favor. But most likely, I would expect at least two of the three teams that are competing to still be there, right, yeah. uh, coming down the stretch. So, um, so they'll have something to play for. But Brighton, Man United, Newcastle, like I'm just not certain we're going to have – you know, uh, like a kind of like a a squad full of people that we feel really like good about. Right. Right. So that is sort of leaning me towards um, wild card, like wild card and early for game week 34. I I think it's, I honestly think it's really tricky though. Um, You know, and I think part of the problem uh, and, and there's actually an argument I think for, for free hitting in 34, if you still had it is um, you know, Chelsea in particular have a really nice run of fixtures uh, in the next handful of weeks, uh-huh. right? But they don't double in 34. And even Spurs play uh, four, they play Luton and Forest at home in two of the next three weeks, right? Uh, but it's very hard to have a strategy where you bring in Salah and keep Holland and and somehow keep Sun in that squad as well, right? It's, yeah. it's like you were talking before. It's like ideally you'd wait to see who to drop <laughs> yeah. between like Foden and Sun and all those players. Um so, you know, I think I do think it's really tricky. I think for me, does the Cole reason Palmer I, survive a wild card uh, in game week 30, 31? Yeah. I think he does. Yep. And I, I think the reason that he does is actually with an eye towards Chelsea's doubles yes. ahead. Yes. Right. I think that would be the reason to to do it yep. because um, and, you know, and Holland probably survives, too, for for kind of similar reasons. Right. Yep. So you have Holland. um, uh, you know, you have Holland and Palmer. That's probably the only two. And then the question would be whether it's worth having three. Like maybe you could make an argument. The part, part of the problem is that if you're bench boosting in 34, Chelsea play away to Arsenal, which yeah. is, you know, so it kind of it, it turns someone like Malo Gusto yeah. into a kind of less than ideal option, right, for a, for a bench boost. Yeah. And like he'd be your weakest link almost certainly, right, on a, on a 34 bench boost. Um, but you know, so maybe but it's like Sun. I think Sun is a really tricky one. Um, I think well, all Spurs, of the Spurs, bl- Spurs are blanking tricky. in game week 34 kind of resolves the Sala issue in a way, right? Where right. Sun right. just becomes Sala on a wild card or a free transfer if you can, if yep. you can do it. And I think that's worth looking yep. at. So, yep. um, I feel like that starts to make things a little easier as you size up 34. Yeah, I think it's really, um, I don't know. I mean, could you could you make an argument that that it's just so hard to get a team for 37 that works that like you really should just hold your wild like the, the problem is right if you it, it's it's just really hard to target 34 right yeah. and just and just I, I know no one's like taking notes as we say this out <laughs> loud here but just as a yeah. so Liverpool, Arsenal, Bournemouth, Palace, Wolves, Everton, Sheffield are the teams that double in 34. And we also strongly suspect 99% likelihood that Chelsea, Spurs, Man City, Brighton, Man United, and Newcastle will double in 37, right? No overlap between any of those teams. Yeah. And, and as you noted, uh, Spurs don't play in 34. Uh, and we also are going to get doubles from Chelsea and Spurs, most likely in game week 36, um, you know, 70% uh, likelihood. Um, so that really does mean you either pick one or the other. And so maybe, and again, like, I, I, you, you know, I'm sorry if this seems like we're not like coming in super definitively, but I think like this is part of this, yeah. part of what makes this fun. And I guess I do feel kind of especially engaged right now is that I like, it's fun to think about this sure. stuff. Like it is not, to me, it is not written stone that there's like a very clear way that you should be playing these. Right. So I think you could make an argument though that one, two, three, four, five transfers, right? A five five transfer windows plus any plus any possible hits, and just target thirty four, possibly without bench boosting, right? Would be would be the way to go. And then and then um, and then wild card in thirty five or thirty six, and then with it with a mind towards bench boosting thirty seven. There is like an argument for that, yep. I think, right? Yes. And it and it basically comes down to the depth of the teams that double. Right. And yeah. in, in those in those fixtures. Uh, and also, if you double in 35 and 36, it's a lot easier to have four or five players from Chelsea and and, and Spurs. Yeah. Which you really can't do. Right. Um, so with, that's with, scary with to it, because of the Spurs blank in 34. It becomes scary to drop Sun for that week, yeah. knowing yeah, almost certainly need to have him back for 35 yeah. or potentially 36 whenever that's uh, the first of Spurs double happens. 
Um, yeah. So the wild card after 34 just alleviates you of that uh, responsibility yep. and you don't have to plan for that. So a free sort of free transferring sun out ahead of 34. And I mean, I think that's kind of like what I'm trying to solve is yep. so, sun out, Sala in, done. And then I'll just kind of like build a 34 squad organically yeah. through hits and free transfers. Then wild card in 35 to just yep. blow it out for the home stretch, load up on Spurs and Chelsea, uh, uh, et cetera. Um, yeah. Wow. So we might have both just talked ourselves into a, a 35 or 36 wild card. Yeah, here. maybe. I mean, my my first impulse is your first impulse, though, we should say, is the wild card in 31. You know, the, the first game week after an international break is just always kind of a mess and uh, it's harder to predict. I don't really have an appetite to wild card right now heading into game week 30. So let's get our legs back, check it out, wild card into 31, get get myself set. That's like where I am at right now. But yes, we have yep. just built a very good case for wild card 35. <laughs> So who are the best teams that uh, don't double in 34? Um, you have uh, Man City. They play away to Brighton. So I think even if I were going all in on the doubles, I think I would most likely still have Holland. Um, yeah. And I just mean, United just, have the plum fixture hosting Sheffield United. So this yeah. is, <clears throat> you know, I'm not looking for opportunities to bring Manchester United players in, but that, that could be it. Yep. I just think it's tricky because, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that is, that is true. Honestly. I mean, uh, yeah, it's not They've a great got Burnley right after Chelsea that home also uh, yeah. at, at home followed by the double, which is too, it's like this Manchester United run starting in 34 home Sheffield United, yep. home Burnley away crystal palace, and then a double with two home fixtures. Granted, they're not the best fixtures with Arsenal and Newcastle, but there you have it. It's almost like Manchester United are going to, they're going to be talked about a lot, I think, down the home stretch. Yeah, which we have barely done yeah. uh, so far. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. I mean, not not since game week yeah. eight or something yeah. like that. Um, so I, yeah, I think there's you know I think you can go either way. I think the the real question is whether um, you're sort of okay not going all in on the double in 37, mm -hmm. right? Because if you go for the double in 34 and you don't have a free hit. Right. Which is uh, the case for not everybody listening, but it's the case for me and you. And so I guess that's kind of on our mind primarily. Yeah. I think if you if you have the free head, it just makes sense to just just go ahead and and um, and just and I think I think the bench was I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, maybe it, it just sort of again, it just it depends a little bit um, on. Uh, I just like you got to look at like the quality of the doubles. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a lot, a lot, a lot yeah. to consider. I mean, the problem is once you get past Liverpool, Arsenal, and arguably Bournemouth, it's not a great no. like you know. I, I guess I mean Wolves are home twice, they, which is they can score. Know, that's appealing. You know? they, yeah, they can score for sure. Um, I think that for me personally, I have two. I have two Arsenal players, and I have one Bournemouth player. Right, so I have a total of three players across. Uh, the seven squads that double. I mean, effectively it's six, right? Because I'm not going to be worrying about Sheffield, but they do double in, in 34 as well, right? So I have five transfers, a lot of hits, right? So, and that's assuming no injuries. Um, so that means I could get uh, to four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's say that I keep Holland, right? Yep. Um, then that gets me to nine. And so then I'm maybe looking at like maybe one hit for 34, yeah. something like that. Um, and so that would get me to like 10, uh, effectively nine plus Holland yeah. and plus one other singular. Um, so I think, I, th I think it could work. Um, it's just, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's, I just think it's really tricky. I hate having no Liverpool players is really yeah. part of the problem. And the appeal of, of wild carding right now is that you could immediately get three, yeah. right. Uh, yeah. jump right from zero to three, whether you do it in 30 or 31. Yeah. I agree with you. Liverpool really is the thing. And would I be that excited to, uh, I mean, the main reason to wildcard after the 34 double is so you could triple on Chelsea and Spurs, who are two kind of uh, schizophrenic teams at the moment where Liverpool yeah. is uh, is very bankable. 
that that team. That's true. Yeah. Why am I so excited to double up on Chelsea and Spurs? <laughs> yeah. And I just I just tripled up on Spurs to, for a total of five points. Yeah. Like a seven because I camped into uh, right. But okay. So here's the case for bench boost. Another way to look at the bench boost in 34 is we mentioned keeping Cole Palmer, keeping Holland. You're going to end up if if everybody else apart from these guys uh, are doublers in your team. You're, you're bench boosting to get single gains uh, from some of the best assets in the fantasy game being Palmer and Holland. So I think a bench boost by that logic feels great. You're either bench boosting some marginal doubler guys from Wolves, good, or yep. you're yep. effectively bench boosting to get Holland and Cole Palmer into the mix, uh, which right. is honestly good defensive defensively right. because they're high ownership. Right. Um, yep. So the the bench boost in 34, I think, is less a just lay out 15 doublers. It's more, I don't know, just uh, just it's uh, a mix of double the players that play twice uh, blended with good quality players. You'd want to start regardless of fixture. right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Well, let's um, let's talk a little bit more about um, just kind of general thoughts here, like de- like depending on what you still have, you know, uh, available to you. So um, I think, you know, if you're just like. Very clean and simple. If you have a bench boost left, um, 34 or 37. Those are the two weeks yeah. um, that you want to you want to target. Um, as far as wild card goes, uh, if you still have that, then wild card between 30 and 33, um, in which case you bench boost in 34, most likely. Um, yeah, that's an interesting. Like, is there a way to wild card and then bench? I don't know. I don't, wild card I don't in know. 34? So No. Uh, okay. Oh, well, I guess you could do that. But I was thinking, um, could you wild card early? And but and yet in target thirty four, but actually still bench boost in thirty seven. <laughs> like I don't that that is an interesting <laughs> okay, thought. All right, um, we're covering it, every possible. possible tactic here. I exactly, like it. that is so. Yeah, it's, I guess there might be a way to do that. Basically, like you're basically wild carding so that you have sala right yep. that feels like yep. the most important yep. part of yep. it and yep. then um otherwise but otherwise you sort of maybe want the bench depth i mean uh we're going to talk about players to target um and a wild cover 34 um uh, like i don't want cover 34 in mind um but there are certain spots like with goalkeepers where you're like well maybe maybe i prefer to have ugh, i don't even really know i mean onana do we, can we go back there again brandon do we want to go back there onana's again? interesting there was a, a chart that popped up in my twitter feed of goalkeepers in the premier league who have prevented the most xg basically who are the best um defensive goalkeepers in terms of shot stopping in the league and onana was top of that chart so hmm. onana's having a very strange season he's had so many comic moments um, but he is stopping some really high XG chances. As far as just like putting our fantasy uh, glasses on, I still kind of like him. I still like him. Yeah, I, I can't, the, this whole squad. I just it's hard for me to like yeah. tabla rasa them sure. right. I agree. Like it's I mean, yeah. I'm not even sure we should given given that they're 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 poor you know returns uh, it capsized both of our fantasy seasons in you know, the first yes. like ten weeks or so. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, sorry. So you most likely if you're going to wild card the next handful of weeks, uh, you're going to bench boost in 34. Um, if you know, or or at least even if you don't bench boost, just sort of wild card with 34 in mind, or you wait until 34 is over, uh, in which case you wild card in 35 or 36, and then you get ready for 37. Um, again, I do think that the game week 37 double is is a tricky one, and uh, it's it because as a reminder, it is literally the last week of the season. Right. It is it is, you know, you're heading into game week 38, right? The final game week of the season, yeah. that's Sunday. Right. So these matches tend to be either gigantically important, right? Or or utterly meaningless. Yeah. And and the utterly meaningless ones are 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 pretty scary, right? Because teams can just be completely checked out uh, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, which can work in your favor occasionally. Yeah, Harry uh, Kane but, uh, on the last day, last season. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Um, well, yeah, for some reason in my head, I think of 38 as being a typically high scoring game week and 37 being a, like a frustrating double game week, but maybe I'm, you know, I don't know if that's backed up by results or not. So, all right. So, but let's say that you're going to wild card in the next couple of weeks and you're going to look ahead to game weeks, um, you know, with an eye towards game week 34, where again, Liverpool and Arsenal, two of the best three teams in the league are playing twice, right? Uh, it is a good spot to have six players from those 
two squads. Um, the Liverpool is honestly in a slightly tricky spot right now, I think, in terms of who you'd want to want to target outside of Salah. Um, so let's just start. Uh, goalkeepers, defenders, midfields, forwards. I'm going to give a few options kind of across the line here. Hit me. Um, yeah. So uh, goalkeepers, I think uh, you've got a couple of different options. Now, David Raya, I think, is is one cheap way to get a third Arsenal player into your squad. Uh, Jordan Pickford is... Again, he's a little bit like in the Onana category where he's actually been quite good um, recently, but we all sort of think of him as like the guy who couldn't keep a clean sheet the first, you know, 10 weeks of the season or so. Um, and then you have um, and then you have Neto as well, who uh, obviously has had kind of a tough had a tough run in the double game week, but um, still, I think generally is considered a, a quality keeper and even their defense is it's considered to be a pretty high quality defense or at least it was maybe yeah. until the, a little bit of slippage um of late i think that i would um, i would slip could, jose yeah. sa or jose sa yep. in there for yep. wolves um i think i may have misspoke maybe sa actually uh, was higher than onana in that defensive goalkeeper rating chart he's had one of those seasons and he's been not talked about at all and i think yeah, arsenal yep. with with Rea, maybe you want triple arsenal elsewhere on the pitch and just saw gives yeah. you um just a goalkeeper on a team where you're not gonna be excited to trip to triple up on them yeah i think that makes sense and i think yeah you kind of um i hit on one one thing i was thinking about too which is that the, yeah, the problem with raya is that it means no um no odegaard i think most importantly right uh-huh. he's kind of the hardest one to have um if you uh because Almost everybody already has Saka. Almost everybody probably, probably has at least one Arsenal defender, if not two, right? Yeah. So um, if you bring in if you bring in Raya, it sort of closes the door on having a more attacking asset yeah. um, for the double. And spe- and, um, and all the yeah. defenders on Arsenal, even Saliba and Quivior, Ben White as well, yep. just get picking up yep. a lot of attacking returns. And Raya is kind of just like the lowest ha- hanging fruit there. I think the other player I'll just throw in there was, is Johnstone. Um, and obviously no one's super ever, ever, ever super excited about uh, having palace uh-huh. players um, outside of maybe as a, uh, but uh, they play home at tw- twice in 34 and he's 4.4 million. And I think that as we start to wild card, start to put these teams together for, for 34, um, we're quickly going to just run out of money, right? This is just a class, yeah. a classic problem uh, during these, um, uh, you know, when you, when you, when you wildcard and you want to build that kind of optimal team. So he is a cheap asset. And I actually think just because, um, goalkeepers ha- are such a source of en- endless frustration for us. The fact that Jose saw is 5 million, right. And that David Raya is also <laughs> 5 million, if much. not even a little, a little more than that. It's like, just, just get the 4.5 million guys, right. Yeah. Just get Johnstone at 4.4 million. And, um, True. Yeah. Oh, speaking of your boy, Anon is only 4.8, Brandon. So there you go. I'll take it. Uh, yeah. And yep. Yeah, yeah. Pickford's at uh, 4.6. Uh, Neto's actually up to 4.7. I think it's when you go bottom ahead of the um, the double in 28. So yeah, I honestly think Pickford, Johnstone, such a boring combination, <laughs> but again, only cost you 9 million yeah. and uh, they do, they both play twice um, uh, in, in 34. Um, Everton uh, also are, are home twice. I mean, the, the, you know, the problem with Wolves and Everton is that the, you know, they're, um, they both had to play an Arsenal or Liverpool squad, right? Oh. Um, uh, well, actually, no. Well, that, that would actually that would, I guess, be the appeal of Johnstone is that Palace play West Ham and Newcastle. Yeah. Um, so slightly better. I mean, Newcastle. I, who knows what they're going to look like by the time thirty four rolls around? Who knows if Eddie Howe will still be there, Brandon, by the time thirty four rolls around? I think he I think survives till the summer, and then um, he goes. I think he goes in the I summer. Think, and then Big Big Sam comes back, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Back <laughs> <laughs> and out of this uh, tiki right. tech uh, style. Yeah, exactly. Like back to back to base. Yeah. Some like old long ball mm-hmm. is back. Um all right. And then defenders a little more straightforward. Uh, I, I group these into tiers, right? So you have the Arsenal and Liverpool defender tier. The Liverpool defender tier is a very tricky thing, <laughs> right? Because um, you have uh, Trent, who is um, an awesome player, an amazing fantasy asset, uh, has been injured seemingly all all of this season, mm-hmm. right? Just a constant problem. Uh, you know, expected back. Um, I, I mean, I guess he actually, actually started more than I realized. I'm looking at his his numbers right now, but um, you know, he costs eight point five million. He's really really hard to bring into your squad, right? If you want to hold on to Holland, for example. Um, so I think 
a lot of us are going to end up with someone like Virgil van Dyke just kind of because we can, it's a little easier to get there with him. Um, I think uh, Rabo would be the other one. Uh, but again, another player who I would worry a little bit about whether he starts twice in the double, right? Rabo, yes, totally. Yeah, Klopp has been rotating quite a bit in the fullbacks, and he's got reliable backup with the youth players coming up. I mean, the, yeah. the defensive option we didn't mention in the goalkeeper section was Kelleher. And then it right. kind of be, it's awkward timing where Allison is currently by uh, Ben Dinnery projected to maybe be back from injury right between game week 33 and game week 34. Um, so it's, right. it feels like an unnecessary sort of cell phone yep. to bring in Kelleher and he just doesn't play a minute in the tumble in 34. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm just kind of like adding fuel to this fire of the Liverpool defense. It's just total chaos. Yeah. So then you have to convince yourself that Van Dyke is worth the cost to bring him in. Yeah, 6.5. I think he probably is, uh, he, you know, a little bit of goal threat. Um, probably the outside of a Liverpool defender, the best. Oh, that's just tricky. It is It is very tricky for sure. Um, I think that uh, uh, just on, one more thing on Robertson, because it's obviously tempting to try to like make an argument for him, but uh, he has played in the last seven matches for Liverpool, right? Uh, in those seven matches, he has only started twice. Uh, actually, I think he started three times um, and they got subbed off in the 59th minute in one of those starts. So mm-hmm. three starts in seven, subbed off the 59th minute, 29 minutes in the, in the Man City match, 22 in the Luton match, uh, 32 in the Arsenal match, and 21 in the Chelsea match. So, right, even even against top opposition, they're not rushing him back. They're mm-hmm. still treating him very carefully. So I think there's just a little too much... Uh, uh, you know, too too much on the on the left on the left back spot to even consider him. And you know, if Trent comes back soon, then then he's obviously uh, you know um, in the conversation. But um, I don't think we'll know until probably game week thirty three or thirty four, yeah. right? Like it may actually be th- thirty four itself when we find out. Yeah, and then the Robertson issue cuts the other way, where it does it, him being fit does make the Connor Bradley pick less appealing to me as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you just almost can't go Bradley, right? Because you just, I mean, Trent, unless Trent is just out the real, and again, I don't wish this on him, but like, you know, a a setback for Trent would really be, um, would really be helpful here, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, fully healthy by August. Sure. Yeah. Completely healthy, right? Uh, healthy as he's ever been. But if he couldn't play until then, like yeah. that would be, you know. Ready for uh, the Euros. I mean, selfishly. there's there could be an oh, opening there yeah. if uh, Kyle Walker pulled up with some hamstring issue against Brazil I this know. weekend. I know. We had a question um, from uh, from somebody on the Discord from Leisure Rules about uh, which injuries we had to be concerned about. And my initial thought was basically none of the international break injuries. Like, I don't think there's like a single one that, that I trust, right? Yeah. Like we may, we may find more out later, but it's like, yeah. it was all of them, right? Holland and uh, Cole Palmer and Saka. And like, you just, you know, the rundown, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, may, maybe, maybe, um, Maybe Walker was a slightly riskier um, option, but it just seems in general. Like, he didn't look like an yeah. excruciating pain coming off the pitch. It <clears> looked <throat> like a that could be very preventative. But who right. knows? Who knows? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think it's uh, right. So let me let me get back to my my Liverpool. Here, we're my talking about phone. Liverpool yeah. fullbacks. My extensive my extensive notes. Yeah. Right. I was I was I was actually confusing uh, Connor Bradley on the left or on the right. So you know maybe Connor Bradley is is safer than I was letting on, but <sighs> he's not. No, he's you not. Think so. The only the only safe literally like all four defender spots and goalkeeper are. A doubt, except for Van Dyke, right? Even even Konate is red flagged right now. They're sort of, um, you know, so it's, it's only it's only Van Dyke. It's Van, Van Dyke sta- like the cheese. Van Dyke stands alone, Brandon. So that's <laughs> that's where we are right now with with Virgil. Um, that you have kind of a middle tier, which I'm just putting Everton defenders into, um, and I think that again, it's a little bit like the argument for Johnstone. They are so cheap, yeah. right? So even if you're not uh, like a believer in Everton or you don't really want to be loaded up at Everton players, 
if you're bench boosting in 34, you might as well stick one, st- stick one on your bench. Uh, cause there's, there's plenty of, of cheap options and, you know, most of them are capable of getting some kind of attacking return. Like I, I'd rather have an Everton defender than like a Burnley defender, for example. Right. Like, uh, or, or, um, not, excuse me, not, not Burnley, um, Bournemouth? a Bournemouth defender. Yeah. Whew, mm, I don't know. Bit of a coin toss there. Why? I don't Tell know. me I mean, why. I guess it's just, I, I just, I trust their defense a little bit more. I mean, someone like Mike Alenko is 4.6 million, two goals, one assist, seven clean sheets on the season. Uh, you know, even Tarkowski, like just like a super solid, reliable, like center back. I, uh, you know, I don't know. I just, maybe it's just that like, it's, it's just them conceding a, a combined five goals to Luton and Sheffield in the last couple of weeks. It's really um, like change my perspective a little bit here they also they did they have not looked good mm-hmm. right like uh so it may be, and maybe like they're just this is a total drive by so, so punitive of, of the punitive you know? measures against bournemouth more than now, a celebration well, of everton well yes that is that is true but i mean if you're if you're on a wild card you may have to decide whether to keep your bournemouth players or bring in an everton player and i'm yeah. just saying i personally just uh, partially because of Deitch's style, partially because I think there's a little more attacking potential from them. I mean, Zabarni getting a goal is, is incredible, but like that's just a, a, a total fluke, right? So like, Nessie will, will be really... fit again, most likely by 34. I think he'll be a popular Bournemouth yeah. pick. That's true. And he's true. got incredible attacking yeah. output. That's true. Uh, Bournemouth do play away twice, uh, whereas Everton are home twice too. That's maybe the more kind of like mm-hmm. um, ra- cold, cold and rational, sure. um, you know, angle as I well. Get that. Uh, and then we get to our bottom tier, where your your beloved Bournemouth defenders can be found, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Hey guys. Um, well, we have you have uh, Wolves defenders who are somehow even more disappointing than Bournemouth defenders, right? It's it's kind of it's remarkable. Yeah. I mean, I think. Uh, uh, the eight Nori dream. I've lived it, Brandon. We've all lived it. It's a, uh, it's a dangerous game. You know, it's a, yeah. uh, he remarkably has double digit returns in two of his last three matches, but I still am terrified to have them in my squad. Eight Nori is like a dream that you, you have a dream that, you know, maybe it's sort of like provocative in nature. And then you wake up and you're like, what I would give to be able to fall back asleep and get back right to where I was. And that really, uh, uh, fun dream, the, that, but, but you can't feeling. do it. You can't do that, it, and that's like eight nerve is that once dream. Your brain, have you ever woken up from a dream and then fallen back into that dream? Have you ever actually had that I, happen? I, I, I don't think I ever have. Now, I think it happened once, mm-hmm. and it was incredible. It was really. It was like I, I was. I think I might have been sick though, so maybe it might have been lucid dreaming <laughs> or something. Sure, but I, yeah. it was like a, I remember it was like the whole night I was sort of drifting out of one one dream. Uh-huh. It was really. Uh, I should have written it. I. You know what I need is a dream journal. Yes, you do. And, yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, you've been telling me this for a long time. And maybe now I'll finally. Uh, I've been saying for a journal. long time, always cheating would be made better if there was a dedicated section in every episode where we just talk about our dreams. <laughs> our, like a little Freudian, <laughs> our Freudian corner. So uh, you've got, uh, yeah, you've got Kilman and, um, and I suppose Aiden Nuri is the kind of high upside. Who knows what you're going to get back. It's just like, these are just, they're just dangerous picks, right? Yeah. Because this, like the, the problem, it's like, it's like Kirkas, right? Who everybody, ourselves included, were like, you know, maybe, maybe Kirkas <laughs> is the high upside. Why don't you go for it yeah. kind of pick? He plays 45 minutes, stinks, gets subbed off, doesn't even play the next match, right? So it's a uh, these. This is how I feel about Aiden Nori. It's he's not like you look at Aiden Nori's starts over the course of the season, and it's, it's just it's a very I mean, it's a very inconsistent picture, yeah. right? Yeah, picture. So yeah. Um, then the other defenders are um, are, are Palace, and uh, I know you had um, you found you found joy, as they say, Brandon with with uh, palace defenders. I know you really enjoyed having, um, who was Mark it? Gahey. Who did you have? Was it? Yeah. You had Mark Gahey. Yeah. Well, Some, thankfully <laughs> he's got a knee injury with an unknown return date. So he won't trouble I, you anymore. I, this I, I, I can't fall back asleep into that nightmare. Um, yeah, no, they, <laughs> they, uh, Joachim Anderson was all over Kings of the game week on always cheating earlier this season. And that was the curse of the King heavy as the head that wears the crown yeah. because yeah. Anderson and that defense dropped off the map after we did yeah. that. Kings his hair game. looks, his hair looks incredible on his, his profile yeah. picture on the fantasy site. It's like, uh, yeah, rarely do you see like, that's like a studio level hair. Like it's incredible. <laughs> he, he could do like a shampoo commercial. It's yeah. remarkable. He was paying attention when they said this picture day is on this day. And Joaquin was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm putting that in the calendar. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> 
I know they do two picture days at my kid's school uh-huh. and it's like, it's one too many. Like the second one, no one like it's no one does it. You know, you do, you do the one in this fall, the, the, the spring picture day. It's like, we, we got to get out of here. You know, it's like the school <laughs> sure. year has gone on long enough. Um, so I think, yeah, but I suppose Tyreek Mitchell has had some moments so far this season. Uh, I suppose Anderson would be the kind of safest pick though. Two goals, two assists, six clean sheets on the season. Um, and again, they play home twice. So maybe slightly more the idea of being doubled up though, uh, with palace (laughs) defenders, it feels like, it feels like honestly, it's arguably too, too many, but it's, it's certainly most likely one too many, but they are cheap. So, you know, they have, they have to be part of the conversation. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks. Prize Picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. This week on Prize Picks, I'm selecting Giannis Antetokounmpo for more than 32.5 points and LeBron James for more than 8.5 assists. Download the app today and use code BLUEWIRE for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code BLUEWIRE on the Prize Picks app for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. Get cash for clothes at Plato's Closet in North Charleston in West Ashley. It's so easy. Recycle, earn cash, repeat. We pay cash on the spot for your trendy, gently used clothing, shoes, and accessories. At Plato's Closet, we buy all seasons, all day, every day. It's time to clean out your closet and cash in. Bring in your denim, graphic tees, athletic wear, shoes, handbags, and more. Sell your styles to Plato's Closet for cash. Then do it again. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Uh, the midfield is um, a little easier, I think. Um, you have a top tier, Salah, Saka, and Odegaard. And again, just a refresher because we've been talking for so long here, Brandon, is <laughs> these are players I would be targeting on a wild card if I was looking towards game week 34. So uh, the top tier, Salah and Saka, of course, right? Um, Saka, uh, not only does he double, but he's just been you know incredible form. Mm-hmm. Again, another one of these players that has a, a, a minor... Um, illness i think injury. it was so was it just illness okay i believe yeah. so so that's uh, just as very mild as so far as injury yeah. news goes yeah and then odegaard who didn't work out for me uh but has worked out for others so far this season uh i am gonna tabla rasa him though brandon blank slate with me and, and martin odegaard <laughs> okay. i'm willing to cons- i'm willing to get hurt again sure. with martin Odegaard. okay the muscular injury says dinnery on Saka, but um okay who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I, I'm with you on Odegaard. I think that he's just a fun player to own, too, because he's so fun yep. to watch and so involved in the yep. attack. And Arsenal do a lot of attacking. And yep. whatever I can do, like Saka and Salah, um, you know, they can be very frustrating as good as they are when they're just like pinned to the touchline and they're just like yep. so wide. Odegaard, it is so fun to have a fantasy asset who is so central. Uh, yep. And um, yeah, so I. I see a good opportunity there. Again, it goes back to who are you going to drop to have to uh, pick up again? I think Foden. Foden and Son, Son obviously loses out in 34, and I think Foden is just going to fall away over the next few weeks. It's a shame because he's he's been great yep. too, and they play, you know, Man City play three, three home matches in the next four. Um, again, it, it would be an argument for, for waiting. Um, uh, it, it, to bring him in if you're going to until 34, right. And just, and just stick with, stick with what you've got. Um, I do think just increasingly, I'm sort of of the opinion that I want to wait until 31 before I kind of lock in. Mm-hmm. If I, whether I choose to wild card in 31 or whether I choose wild card in 35, 
I, I don't think I'm going to do it this week. Um, Man City Arsenal, it's like, okay, well, I don't really want to be tripled up, but you know, it's like, it's already, it just, it's, it's a little messy. Um, yeah. And so I think, uh, and we haven't even gotten to um, what I think is a really tricky question, which is, which is Ollie Watkins. Uh, but just to finish the thought on, on midfielders a little bit. So you have the kind of top tier Salah is, is an obvious one. Saka and Odegaard uh, kind of have a middle tier as well, uh, where you have Diaz who has been kind of the one consistent Liverpool option yep. um, outside of, um, outside of Salah uh, when Salah has been available and healthy. Uh, and then I think as has to get thrown in there as well. Yep. Uh, again, Palace have those two home matches in 34 and he's, even cheaper than I realized. I didn't know that as he was only 6 million. He's, you can actually, you really, it's a great enabler price, right? If you're looking for like a, a fourth mid or something like that. Yeah. What about Olise though? Michael Olise, who on his day is as good as, as a, and he's got to be cheaper than as a even. And it looks like he's set to be back. Maybe this coming game week coming back from, um, uh, whatever hamstring injury, you know, whatever thing yeah. he had going on. Um, of course, like every time Olise recently has come back from injury, he immediately gets injured again. Uh, yeah. so that he, I wouldn't want to be bringing Olise in around game week 30, 31, <laughs> just to hope yeah. that he stays fit. It's crazy. To yeah, exactly. It's, I'm glad you like, it's good to like introduce various options like, because it's like when in, in 20 and 22, like kind of before he got injured again, he had a 15 point return and a 16 point return. Yeah, incredible. Right. So there's, there is a lot of potential there, but yeah, just probably a little too risky. Certainly not a player I'd bring in if I was wildcarding in game week 30. Um, and then, um, and then the bottom tier is, um, uh, Sarabia, who is uh, a 4.7 million midfielder for Wolves, a great mid, uh, fifth midfielder on a wild card, especially if you're looking yeah. at um, bench boosting in game week 34. Uh, there also are a ton of injuries uh, for Wolves right now, so he's a fairly locked in player. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I think a pretty easy pick, honestly, if I were wild card right now and I was going, um, I almost certainly want to have three forwards, right? So I just want a cheap kind of fifth midfield option. And I think I have this right that when uh Huang Hee Chan is not fit in the squad, Sarabio can take penalty duties. Um so there's a little bonus there. Okay. Yeah, that's I actually I'm not I can't I can neither confirm nor deny, but um that is a uh, that that would make some sense. Well, let's see. Um, let's let's yeah. let's go to our list of, you know, they've got the set piece takers. Um yeah. Penalty and set piece takers for Wolves. Uh, you've got Huang, Mateus Cunha, and then Sarabia is third in the pecking order. Okay, so there's a chance. Yep. We got it. We got a chance. Um, <laughs> and then um, the other midfielder I threw in there. If you just if you just hate Sarabia, I don't know. Maybe you just don't. You don't like him, Brandon. Mm-hmm. Is uh, Ryan Christie at five million for Bournemouth? I, I feel like I'm the only one who is, I'm like the a fan club of one, but I have really enjoyed Ryan Christie's flight for Bournemouth. <laughs> okay. uh, he's, he's had some really nice performances. Don't hide your uh, light under last, a bushel, uh, man. Let that shine. I know. I know. So I'm, I'm a Christie fan. I'm a, I, you know, I'm, I'm team Christie. So he's another one to, uh, to consider. You're telling well, me right? uh, Decore at Everton doesn't crack the low tier list like Mr. Garbage Time uh, goal. Uh, I mean, Mr. Yeah, I'm going to save Everton from relegation goal game week 38 last season. Uh, yeah. He should probably be in the mid tier. He's yeah, at 5.5. Although he's, he's so streaky. Like yeah. he actually hasn't really, uh, he hasn't had a return since game week 16. Yeah. You know, you know what you're, you know, what's biasing you is that you and I were in, we were at, at the Selhurst park sure. when he had that amazing yes. performance against Everton. Uh, when he's good, he's good. Assist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is why the eye test can be so dangerous, Brandon, especially <laughs> yeah. the in-person With eye test is even more yeah, dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. And then that brings me to forwards, uh, a little more straightforward here. Um, I think for 34, um, you have, uh, Holland, assuming you keep him, uh, and then Solanke. And then I think Darwin would be the third forward that you'd want. Um, and if you and I are kind of both the opinion that we hold Holland, especially, if you're wild carding and you're going to need as many players from these doublers for, for 36, 37, it makes sense to hold him for that reason as well. Along with the fact that he's just a perennially good option to have in fantasy plays tons of minutes. And, um, and as you know, he's the, he's the, he's the primary goal scorer and arguably the best team in the premier league. Right. So there's, yeah. there's not a, and we have to, we don't have to, we like barely ever talk about him because he's such, he's such a fixture in fantasy. Right. But, um, but I think the question is uh, Ali Watkins. 
and what we do with Watkins because Watkins does turn into Darwin very easily. Watkins does not double in 34, does not double in 37. You are on record saying that you plan to own Watkins for the entire season and will not drop him. Um, but it's, I think <laughs> your faith is going to be tested. <laughs> and also, as, as amazing as he's been, he has blanked in the last two fixtures. Yeah. Now, again, that's just, that's, you know, doesn't hold a candle to his amazing performances this year. But um, so he's got a, you know, he's not, he's not completely automatic. Um, and the run of fixtures for Villa is not fantastic. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, Wolves at 30 is good. It's one of the reasons I want to hold my, my wild card is to make sure I want to, I don't really want to drop Watkins before the Wolves match, right? Yeah. Um, but then you have uh, Man City away in 31, Arsenal away in 33. Um, Brentford home in 32 is, is a good fixture. But, like, you know, but certainly, um, you know, two of the next four are the worst possible fixtures for Ollie Watkins. Yeah. Uh, so I think that the argument for dropping him is, is, is a pretty good one. And I think the fact that in 31, when he plays away to man city is when Liverpool host Sheffield at home, it's going to be really hard to avoid a walk-ins to Darwin transfer that week. Even if you don't wild card. I'm with you. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to be a liar and I, I, you know, I hate liars, uh, but I, mm-hmm. I will be dropping. So does Henry it. Rollins. <laughs> yes, exactly. Or does he hate them? He is one. He is right? one. Yeah. But you know, he, yeah, does he hate himself. Yeah, yeah, I think I so. Um, was his tongue in his cheek when he was talking about himself <laughs> being a liar? Uh, uh-huh. uh we'll yeah. have to see, watch the behind the music on VH1 to know more, but I'm with you. I think just the upside for Watkins is kind of in the rear view mirror. And if you just think, it's Darwin, Holland, and then I want the, I mean, the, the, the wild card there gets to be, are you going to dip your toe in the Hoyland waters for Manchester United's double in 37? Who's the third striker for game week 34 though? If you say you've got Darwin and Holland is unmovable. Solanke. Solanke, right. Of course, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just cause he's cheap and, and yeah. his, you know, he's, I think he's the only, um, real, real <laughs> I option. I don't even know if they're, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dominic Calvert-Lewin, anybody? No, no, thank you. I know. Poor Sheffield. Like it's just, the, there's, but there's just nothing to say there, yes. right? There's just, you can't. You Ollie, can't Ollie, uh, uh, McBurney. Many McBurney yeah, fans McBurney. out there. I, I like McBurney. You know, I'm a fan. No yeah. shots. Yeah. Nothing against him. Yeah. Just plays no for, a, for a crappy team. Unfortunately, we wish him the best. All right, we do, we do wish him the best, Brandon. And you know who I also wish the best to? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a little pivot here, okay? Please, because we've done this is there's a lot of game week 34 talk, but there is a game week in front of us, right? So uh, I hope we set the table for people a little bit, help them with their thinking. Uh, by the way, we had a Wolves fan who commented in the chat that said that Sarabi is the designated pen taker um, as long as Huang is out. So um, I think that we are. No, um, I think that that's Chris, think Chris in the chat. I think he's actually saying Cunha is the pen taker. So the issue, <clears throat> Cunha, the further right. issue there is Cunha is also out injured, but he in all likelihood could be back for game week 34. So we're just right. kind of in a yeah. okay. wait so and see. So yeah, we're going to just table. Forget I, yeah, forget everything I just said. Okay. Yeah. I, did, I made things more complicated. Um, so the, and we talked a little bit about our strategy. I am, I will either wild card in 31 or 35 and I plan to decide well, I mean, if it's 31, then I guess I've got another week to, to think about it. Um, the real question is whether the, the Sala FOMO gets, gets yep. the best of me, yep. right? And I just sort of, um, I, I can't resist making the transfer. But I think I, I think it makes sense to wait a week. And, and I'll just, um, um, I just have to think it through a little bit. Yeah, I can uh, even see longer. if you're planning to wild card in 31, there is an easy enough case to say, well, then just wild card in 32 or 33 if you know, depending on what happens, because now if we're looking at sun out as early as game week 31, it's kind of takes care of a solid, uh, transfer almost for free, uh, without having, that's true. If you have the money to to do it, that's true. Although ideally you, I I would love to be tripled up on Sheffield for 31 or, you know, on Liverpool ahead of the Sheffield match for 31. And I have zero at the moment. Right. So that would be the, the, um, the appeal there. Um, I can hear all the Wednesday fans gritting their teeth right now. 
<laughs> oh, I know, I know. That, I, that's so true. It's so it's it's it, if you hadn't said have is, you haven't had said Sheffield like twenty times in this episode, I would let let it go. But uh. no, no, you know that's a correction that I'm okay with because I wouldn't say Manchester, right? That would no, be very confusing. Right. Uh, now, now, granted, Sheffield. Wednesday should should have to come up to the Premier League before I get harangued about saying this they're, yeah, and the wrong way. They're, but, they're struggling but I want to respect right now. <laughs> yeah, but I want to respect the club system. Yeah, yeah exactly. Shout out to uh Danny Bean, uh, Danny Bean longtime yeah. friend and Patreon supporter. Speaking of Patreon, Brandon, mm. I want to say thank you to our Patreon supporters. Okay. Uh they really do support the podcast. The ad market for podcasting has uh, dried up considerably, right? I'm not breaking any news there. Anybody who uh, pays attention to what's happening in the, the ad space and anywhere else for that matter uh, has an, an you know, interest rate. I know, Brian, you're always going on about interest rates in this pod. Well, mm-hmm. it affects uh, this very podcast that you're listening to. Uh, I just learned much- this term, mm-hmm. um, a finfluencer, uh, a, f- a financial YouTuber or financial blogger is a Finfluencer. So that's what I'm really trying to, hmm. to get at yeah. here on this podcast. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Oh, Fin Twit. Is that where that comes from? The financial Twitter. Fin Twit. Mm-hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Well, anyway. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, an, you know, it, it's, it's gotten trickier and trickier. And so, uh, the thing that keeps uh, this podcast afloat is our Patreon supporters and, uh, whether you, uh, want the extra podcast that we do each week, uh, which we do by the way, and it's always, it's a fun and loose pod. We did one even last Thursday when we had literally nothing to talk about, uh, and we still banged out 40 minutes. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, so that's the, we do, we do a bonus podcast. We have a discord, people plan meet, meetups all over the world. Um, you've got your Toronto meetup yeah. coming April this 13th. Sunday. Uh, April 13th. April 13th like yeah. If you're in the, the greater Toronto area and are interested in meeting up on the 13th, send me a DM or whatever through, um, yep. our various avenues and I'll get yep. the details together and make sure you all know about it. Yeah. And I think we're, we might, uh, be at Smithfield hall in a couple of weeks mm-hmm. as well on a Sunday. So, or Saturday, Sunday, whatever it is, Saturday, Saturday, I think. the f- yeah. sixth, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. So, um, lots of, you know, but, but meetups that happen all, you know, I'm not just exaggerating here, literally all over the world. Uh, they get, they get planned on the discord, uh, as well as lots of private groups and, and all sorts of, and, and chat about food and politics and, uh, do we have a politics channel? I wouldn't dare dip my toe in there, Brandon. Too dangerous. Uh, but we might have one. I don't know. We have a non-FPL uh, we, topics channel. So yeah, maybe there we go. Put your yeah, opinions exactly. in there. But, yeah, but there's all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff depending on what your what your taste may yeah. be. Food and music and gambling yeah. and all kinds of all kinds of stuff. So uh, you can go to patreon.com slash always to support the pod. And if you don't want any of that stuff, if you just like the pod and you want to say thank you, you can also go to patreon.com uh, always cheating to, um, to just say thank you with um, even the lowest pledge level is a, uh, is an amazing level of support. It really does um, add up. So um, yeah. yeah, but thank you to everyone who does support the podcast, Brandon. Um, so let's close out the pod though, by looking at game week 30. Uh, the one right in front of us. It is what I like to call, uh, what do I like to call this kind of game week, Brandon? Uh, this is a classic, an FPL classic. FPL I can classic. hear the exactly the can right. of FPL being cracked in a refreshing yeah. way right now. Classic. And I guess they have still not changed the clocks, which is wonderful. <laughs> so that means that we get a uh, an 8.30 start, yeah. uh, 11 o'clock matches, and then they have two bonus matches for us, Brandon, on Saturday, hey. a one thirty prime meridium and a uh, 4 p.m. OK, Sweet. so uh, there's uh, all sorts of matches that happen on Saturday, so a, a truly jam packed day of of a footy. Yes. Brandon. And then uh, and then Sunday, two great matches as well. You have uh, well, or at least one. Uh, you have Liverpool host Brighton and then you have Man City. Uh, hosting Arsenal and Man City Arsenal is a tremendous match, an incredibly important match, yes. uh, possibly the most important match of the season. It, it, despite, uh, I mean, Liverpool Man City was also a, was a terrific match. But I think, you know, every week that you inch closer to the end of the season, when these top three teams play each other, it just takes on even more resonance, right? And well, so it was it was the a, draw yeah. uh, with between Liverpool and City that kind of put everything in Arsenal's hands. If they win yeah, this game, that's true. they and then they win out, um, which you know, in all likelihood, yeah. is not going to happen. But um, we'll see. But yeah, it is in their hands, which is great. De- as an Arsenal, if you're Mr. an Arsenal, fan. yeah, miss. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Destiny, Brian. It's a great, a great move from the early nineties charts. It shows you what could happen with all these different paths. Uh-huh. You know, it's pretty, pretty sliding doors, you know, it was a real early. Oh, early I, I watched uh, Gwyneth Paltrow on hot ones this week. She was pretty good. 
Talked a little, a little too much about goop for my for my liking, but yeah, I know this is yeah. Sliding exactly. doors did come up. Now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, you just mentioned it here on this podcast, so I think whatever she did worked, right? It's like yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so anyway, got a lot of matches on <laughs> Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I am really excited about Saturday. I actually got to make sure I'm like clear out the schedule now because this is this is amazing. Uh, and then, yeah, I just realized in, and Sunday is also Easter, Brandon. So what a great way to spend Easter yes. with uh, with uh, with the Premier League. So um, the options right now, I'm going to um, I will share my squad for game week um, with for game week 30 with you, Brandon. And uh, we can talk a little bit about. Um, whether um, a wild card makes sense or or something else. I don't know. Um, so right now, uh, I'm kind of ignoring all of the um, all of the flags because again, I just don't I don't trust any of them. Yeah. Um, I like I'll believe it when I see it. So uh, the problem for me is that my defense is my the problem is that my defense is a problem. And um, I have, let's see, um, 1.3 million in the bank which is not enough. I don't even think to move. Ake. Well, yeah, I'm just actually a little short to even move Ake to like Virgil van Dyke. Right. And so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of or, or as, as stupid on as well. Right. Uh, Superman plays away to Liverpool. I want to do everything possible to avoid starting him. Uh, very little chance. Well, actually, you know, Jamal sells might actually start now. Right. Yeah, with the, is um, out for the season. He's out for like six months with his ACL surgery. Yeah, so maybe I have stumbled into, mm-hmm. although a, a double up with with ugh, Newcastle, just what a, <laughs> it's a not, terrifying it's not thought. Been fun. <laughs> but is this is this a squad where you look at it and think Josh has to wild card as soon as possible? I look at the squad and think basically fine, right? Turn Ake into a slightly more fun player, yeah. right? Um, maybe if I if I if I decide that I'm going to, um, I can, I can actually just hold my transfer, which I think would be an acceptable idea here and just start Ake and see if I can yeah. get something from him. Um, I probably move Gabriel over a stupid on actually going to do that right. As we're talking here. Um, he'll certainly start this match, I would think. Um, and, um, yeah, or I could move, uh, if I, if I decide that I'm going to wildcard in the next couple of weeks, I, I would probably bring in Poro or Udagi. Uh, for for Ake, right, yeah. and and target that Luton fixture, um, or I could go um, a stupid on to um, um, like a I don't know maybe like a I, I, well there's kind of no reason to hold on to Ake in that case right but maybe I would hold uh, regardless I could I could look at like a um, uh, Malo Gusto would be another option mm-hmm. I think right for the for the Burnley fixture. Now, if I decide that I want to keep my eye on game week 34, the question is, is there a player that I could bring in that would sort of begin that, that like that process of getting to 34 and still holding onto my wild card for the, for the, for the end run. And if I can't get, if I can't afford Virgil van Dyke, and I don't want an Arsenal player, right? Because they play away to man city. That leaves me looking at, a Bournemouth defender, which is which would be hilarious. It's time to get Michaleco, um, like you've always wanted. Yeah, yeah. Well, honestly, maybe right. I mean that that would be an option. Um, I think. Uh, uh, I mean the the other option the options just aren't great, right? Like outside of Liverpool, it'd be um, uh, Arsenal. I mean, I guess I could, you know, if I really decided I was just going to like throw my hat over the fence and just commit myself to. Uh, to not wild carding uh, in the leader to 34, I could just take a minus four right now, right? And just kind of like start the start the process yeah. and just bring in Virgil van Dyke and then uh, maybe get him by, um, I don't know, I guess I could downgrade Gordon to um, Sarabia, right? And just, and just do that right now. So that would be, that would be one other option. Gordon too. was an in- interesting watch in the England Brazil match. He was probably like England's best player. Honestly, Jude Bellingham didn't have a particular great, match i mean england as a whole didn't play super well but i was impressed yeah. with with gordon he looked great ollie watkins yeah uh, i like the line pretty well too but um certainly happy to keep him but you know still uh, yeah it's like playing yeah. playing uh, at wembley and a friendly is is different than playing for an absolutely sputtering newcastle so i'm not yeah. trying to talk yeah. you out of selling gordon yeah so this is um so this is the squad for 
uh, you know, maybe you could make an argument for Ariel over Dubrovka just because Dubrovka has been kind of disappointing and maybe West Ham are just as likely to keep a clean yeah. sheet or maybe he's like, or maybe they're both going to score anyway. And so you might as well have Ariola to, to differentiate from LaSalle's a little bit. Maybe he gets more saves or something like that. Yeah, but I think I this think, way is like you know, higher risk, higher reward with the double. If, sure. if Newcastle can yep. somehow keep a clean sheet, that's incredible for you. Um, yeah. The more conservative approach is just diversify the portfolio and start yeah. Areola. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, so that's where I'm looking. I mean, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, any like uh, concerns? I agree um, with your assessment that this is not an emergency where you would need to wildcard. The team looks great, and I mean, it's like to, the triple city. I think is is the only issue one would have with this. But then you're like, well, I have triple of one of the best teams in the league. So sometimes right. it's just and worth probably, rolling the dice with them. And I probably would move Ake to um, to somebody else mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, so I'm, I, so I'm I'm kind of faced with the same dilemma. It's an interesting yeah, transition I, to, yeah, what, to my squad. Share yours with me. Because let's, let's I'm sharing it. your woes with the defensive options, but I, I have more in the bank. I actually have... Um, you can see 2.1 million. So I can even turn Sven Botman into Virgil van Dijk. Um, and, and that would work. And then I could bench Ake. I mean, Ake, I think has to go obviously eventually anyway. Um, but then it's sort of like weighing the pros and cons of just roll. Is it better to just roll the transfer? And then I have two to possibly avoid wild carding next week. Um, and to spend that extra, that extra money that I have in the bank on a defender, when I've been talking this whole episode about trying to turn Hungman's son into Mo Salah, and I'm going to need every penny. So 2.1 plus, let's see what, what's my sell on value for son right now. It's, uh, no, nah, I mean, I'm on the wrong page. It doesn't matter, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, you, you led me down. A, I don't you get what I'm saying. I don't. Chaos. Do yeah. do I want to uh, try to get instant gratification and spend all my savings on a defender like Van Dyke and forego that plan of trying to turn Sun into Sala? That's what I'm afraid of. So that would be the argument for rolling or just turning Sven Botman into another 4.5 player into I forgot, an you and I look the only two people who still have Ake. It's so hilarious in your, yeah. your team. And yeah, so you, yeah, your defense feels like a problem. Yeah. That, it's that a major definitely... problem. Yeah. And Kabore can't really be relied upon for any returns either. Yeah. I mean, Pau Torres coming back and being fit, for, I thank God. And I hope he stays that way yeah. is a miracle for me at the moment. Yeah. I think the people who had some uh, Bournemouth defenders are really in a better spot right now, right? Because yeah. you could just start them for the Everton match and and just and just and, and easily hold your transfer there. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, because yeah, Bob, and you, it's like you might as well move them. But but again, it sort of goes back to what we were talking about before, which is what's what's the move that makes the most sense? I mean, yeah, if if there was a way to turn, if there was some cheapy, well, I mean, I. Yeah, it's just tricky. <laughs> I, I, you really can't go into thirty-one without Salah. I'm, 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 I'm with you there, right? I think you can go in. You can go into thirty-one without Darwin. That's uh-huh. fine. Darwin is a, Darwin is chaotic and like it, it, he should never be that scary. But Salah for Sheffield is pretty scary. Like that's probably like triple Campton in a single game week levels of scary, right? Yes. So, um, so I think that feels like the the strategy either is you need to wild card into Salah yeah. or get there or figure out figure that out you know someone was suggesting i move um uh in the in the chat i move um evan was suggesting that i move um Salah or that i move gordon excuse me uh into Eze, mm-hmm. uh which which does make sense but again if i'm thinking about freeing up a little extra cash then gordon to sarabia starts that process. Um, and again, I, I really just have to, I have to decide almost this week, right? Even before 31, I've got to decide what, when, when I'm going to wildcard. And, uh, and I don't know, I just, I just think it's really tricky. I think that it's, uh, it feels to me like the the logic for wildcarding late is really built around the, that double game week and whether that feels like, like double gaming can be super frustrating yeah. though. Right. Like they, you know, and so it's like, does it make sense or should I just, 
I mean, because the argument for wild carding like this week or next week would just be like, I'm in a wild card to bring in a bunch of Liverpool players and they're great, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> they're not gonna, they're an awesome team. And then I would have three of them and I have none right now, right? And it's just like, you know, you kind of do that and I can sort of maybe replace my keepers. And um, so that's, that's kind of one point of view. The other point of view is like, okay, I'm going to drop all of my Man City players, right? I'm going to drop Foden, who's been great for me. I'm going to, you know, so it's sort of, I, I think it is, um, um, it's just, it's just, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't think we should be on this pod necessarily um, suggesting a clear path, yeah. right? I think we can outline some options and people can figure it out for themselves, whatever yeah. makes the most sense. But I think for me, I see two paths that both, both, both of which make sense. Yeah. Right. And it feels like um, it's almost like a coin flip, which one is better. And I'm just going to decide in the next couple of days. But I think, um, I think maybe holding my transfer is honestly the way to go because it just gives me maximum flexibility. I could still wild card in 31 if I wanted to, but it also just gives me the option to really figure out what I want to do over the next um, handful of weeks. Uh, yeah. I, I watch, I watch your strategy with great interest as a podcast partner. And if it would be interesting if you, rolled and then wild carded because then that would be two free transfers that you have flushed down the toilet Alone. in the last couple of weeks because yeah. I think you, you had like two frees that you slept. Yeah. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for bringing me up for bringing that up. You know, ultimately I saved points. Yeah. On no, that, okay? I'm not, I'm so not trying it, to yeah, criticize. Yeah, it I just out. think it's yeah. kind of interesting how it worked yeah, out it like is. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes you go. Hmm. All right. Now we, mm-hmm. I, I, I yeah. agree. There's not necessarily a clear path that we have to recommend right now, but we must for the captaincy. Now you can see here on the screen right now that I've got Cole Palmer captained and Hungman son vice. I, you know, I think a lot of people will be a little twitchy on Spurs after their performance against Fulham. And it was a good time for the international break. So they can wipe that slate clean Sun Always good for fantasy points. Where are you at the Palmer versus yeah. son debate? I've got it on sun at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, just I think it's, I don't know. Fulham, Fulham have shut some teams down at, at home, mm-hmm. you know? Sure. And so I think, I think it was more of a Fulham issue than a Spurs issue. I don't know. Or a Fulham, Fulham playing well sure. instead of Spurs just being bad. Both can be true, obviously. Um, but I think uh, my inclination is to go with Son. He's just a, you know, we have a, almost a decade of, or whatever it is, how many, many years have been in the Premier League. He's got a great long track record. Um, and, you know, I just, I expect him to be very good at home as well. So Yeah, and I think that's there. fair. It's fair if you just want to go uh, even farther out with that lens is Spurs, even though they laid an egg at Craven Cottage, have just been remarkably more consistent than Chelsea yeah. this season. Yeah. And to pin yeah. any hopes on Chelsea is like, that's a much more fragile framework than saying yeah. I'm just going to roll with Sun. So I agree with you there. If if you had Salah, if you and I end up wildcarding this week and we get Salah, I mean, who knows? Like a bunch of injuries could could pile up over the next couple of days and we're kind of forced into a move, right? Yeah. Uh, but if you had Salah, would you would, would he be an auto captain for game week 30? I, uh, I, 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 that feels like a strong way of putting it. I mean, he is, yeah, he is home and field Brighton defense bad. I'm just kind of going through the list in my mind. Um, but let's see Salah currently team selected by 24.3%. Like what part of that ownership are dead teams? Uh, Salah right. doesn't feel like he's poised to bury you. I feel like active managers are still like us going to be looking more closely at, Ollie Paul or Cole Palmer and uh, son. So uh, it, it, that's like kind of a case I'm making for having Sala, just having him and not captaining him is an advantage. Yeah. I, I think I probably would for the same reason that I argued for, for son yeah. a minute ago, he's like an even better version of that. Right. Which is just like, it's a home match. He's super consistent, you know? Um, yeah. I think, but, but I, but I, I don't know that he's worth pulling up your team to get right. Yeah. Like it's he's not such a runaway captain like he will be next week that you have to, you know, tear up your squad to to fit him in. Um, I think that um, I guess I would go Sal, I, uh, yeah, go Salah, Son, Palmer. That would be my top three, and I guess I'd make Holland the fourth just because he's you know because he's Holland. He's Holland, Holland. 
We love you, Holland. I hope he's listening this it. week. I could see Sokka doing something in that, that match, though. I would not be surprised if he got some kind of attack in return. Just having pens is a great thing. I mean, uh, that's for in, in regardless of fixture. That's yep. kind of what makes Cole Palmer so appealing. But then Sun yeah. is on pens as well for Spurs. Like, we're talking about all these pen takers, which is great. So I agree. Sokka is still, like, a fun differential though to bet on that match feels wild to me in a fantasy way fantasy way yeah i agree it's a, like a, there's a lot of outcomes that are possible one one maybe feels like the most likely outcome honestly um all right well that is i think we've covered a lot of ground on this pod brandon a lot of ground and um uh let's let's wrap it up here let's do um it. wanna once yeah, once again, say thank you uh, to everyone who supports the podcast on Patreon, or if they just give us a review on um, you know Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, Acast, wherever they listen to the podcast, those reviews help us to um, help people to find the podcast yeah. and help us to continue growing and, and sustaining our audience. So um, thank you so much for everyone who does that. Um, and uh, Brandon, do you want to thank our producer patrons? Of course. Big thanks as always to producers Mike DiPietro, Trevor Ingerson, our buddy Chris Howell, Go Tennessee, Bubba's Coon, James Holland, Dave Wagner Lodal, go Celtics, Nick Wright, Lazarus Yanos, Greek FPL. Let's go, baby. Jesse Halstead, Bruce Kerr, uh, Aussie Rules. Uh, I, I listen, I'm skipping over a lot of people who hail from locations on planet Earth, so I <laughs> can't do a shout out for everybody. Yeah, let's just steam through the rest of these names. Uh, all love and respect to them. Brian Chin, Blair Jacobson, Todd Byerly, Andy Portlock. At FPL Merch, Kerry Swanson, Jefferson Turner, Buffalo Wildmings, Francis Moore, Sam Shower, Caleb Robbie, Bulger, Paulson Kruger, Alex Holcomb, Alex Holcomb, James Keatley, The Saint, Bob Fox, Craig Jackson, Shalon F. Kandaki, Terrence O'Donnell, Heath Cram, Thomas Tislov, Noah and Louise, Travis Grant, Linus Venerstrom, Dan Parsons, James C. Matthew Skinner, Fred Jacobson, Brennan, Daniel Hart, Lolly, Ben Coombs, Eric Kite, Gareth H. Rune Sandberg, and Brian Clark, as Josh said, rate review. Thank you to everyone who joined us on the YouTube live and for chatting. We've got assist the assist, Chris Woodstock, the Wolves fan, Brian S, Evan Chowdhury, um, and so many, and and our good friend Dugall as well. Thank you all for um, uh, stopping by. Go check out the video on our YouTube channel at Always Cheating. Uh, cool, great pod. Uh, look forward to chatting with you next, Josh, on our patreon episode as we finalize our game week 30 plans and i'll see you then all right sounds good thanks everybody bye